All right, so today we have a big shop update, shop improvement uh, project to do that is gonna be a game changer and something necessary for the future. Uh, but we also have some house upgrades I wanna show you. So this is kind of a funny story. This is something I've wanted to do for a while uh, for the pups. And even before we had Ella, we have Blue and Ella, we have two dogs. So Christy's been talking about it. She's wanted us to do this. And I told her, jokingly, I was like, you know, if I ever podium at Clutch Kickers again this year, you know, top three, I'll get Blue a fence. And obviously I was gonna get him a fence either way, but it was kind of a good incentive and a good funny reason to get a podium. So when I won round three, uh, Chrissy texted me and the first thing she said was, Blue gets a fence. And it cracked me up. So. We got a fence and uh, the process went pretty quick to permitting getting it installed I mean that only took a day and now we finally have a fenced in backyard for the pups So, you know, this is obviously the front of the house I decided to come off the front of the house here and then it goes over to the property line on this side. So we have It's nice aluminum fencing. We decided to do chain link here because the idea was to kind of hide it in the woods now they did have to cut back a lot of stuff to install it but basically the, the woods, the trees, the ferns, all that stuff will kind of take this back over. And the idea is, you know, at some point it'll just kind of blend in to the woods. That way this won't be like such a, a hard barrier, if that makes any sense. I didn't want to do a big like white privacy fence here because I felt like it would kind of block in this backyard. I like the openness here. I don't have a neighbor over there. It's just trees and vegetation. Um, and I didn't want to ruin that by putting a big privacy fence there. So we went with the chain link there. Uh, this privacy fence was already here. So this is my rear neighbor's privacy fence. And then over here, we've got more of the aluminum fence coming off the back of the house. So we've got this whole, whole area fenced in, which is super nice. The dogs have been loving it. It just got knocked out yesterday. And I'm super happy with how it came out. I think it looks great. It honestly makes the whole property look uh, bigger or feel bigger because you're like, wow, we've got all this fenced in and it's still, I don't know, it just divides it up nicely. Um, so big improvement. Glad we finally got that done. It's been on the agenda for a while. Now, the next thing I wanna do is back here, I wanna run that privacy fence all the way across to my property line here because these woods are, you know, all in my property. And I'd like to kind of have like a more definitive line there and it would keep us Basically, I have privacy from every direction, all the neighbors in the backyard. Um, that one house is kind of the only one that can see into our backyard. And, you know, it'd be nice to put the privacy fence there and then everything's kind of private and enclosed. Um, that's the idea, at least. I've got to get the uh, ball rolling on that. We are already through the permit process with that fence when I decided I wanted to do that fence. Um, so that'll be a project down the road. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the house upgrades for now. Like I said, more on that front coming soon, but at least we got that done and the pups have a nice place to play. So you may be wondering why my truck and trailer are over here and that comes into the shop upgrades. So some of you may know I have to tear this shop down. I don't, okay, I don't have to, but it was becoming more complicated to close it in than it was gonna be to just tear it down and build a new shop. Now, don't get me wrong, it kills me to tear down a perfectly good shop. It really does. Um, and this shop is well built. It's just one of those things, man. Bureaucracy, when you start dealing with codes and how the codes changed since this was built in 98, it was becoming a huge headache. I'd already waited five, six months trying to get the permit on it. And it looked like there was no end in sight. Um, and it really wasn't a whole lot more expensive to build a new shop. Now we have a lot of advantages with the new shop. And that is, uh, this is 11 and a half foot walls. We're gonna have 16 foot walls, uh, which is going to allow us to build a big loft on the back, like a big solid 600 square foot loft, to give us tons more storage space. The lifts won't be poking through <laughs> the roof. Um, overall, it'll be a much better setup, building, being able to build it off rip exactly how I want it. Really excited for that. I mean, we're gonna insulate it, um, skin the inside walls, AC it, like I, I it's gonna be great. Uh, so as much as it sucks, I think it's worth it. The problem is we have to sacrifice in the short term to have that nice shop long term. And by sacrifice in the short term, I mean we have to tear this down, which means we won't have any place to work while we wait for the new shop to be built, which is hopefully coming next month. So we're going to have to work out of the garage. So it's a decent sized garage. It's not super deep, but it's plenty wide enough. I think with one car workspace in here, all my tools, I can have a full workshop. You know, I can have everything I need in here to build the car, have some parts storage upstairs and on shelves and get the job done just fine. Obviously we won't have a lift, that'll be a sacrifice, but 
we can do what we need to do. Now, the problem is we have a bunch of shop stuff and equipment. So we could either store all the equipment in here. It would all fit if we packed it in the garage, but then we wouldn't have anywhere to work. Or um, we don't have anywhere to store the stuff, but we have a place to work. So the solution for that is to put a container back here in this back corner. So this is normally where I park my trailers. This is where my open goes. That's where my enclose goes. So the plan is to shove the container as far back here as humanly possible. Like shove it just into the woods, as far over and as far back. So kind of the idea, same thing with the fence, the vines kind of take it over and it just kind of blends in, becomes one with the woods. Isn't too much of an eyesore sticking out. I don't want it to look, you know, trashy or whatever. I just, I need a place to store stuff. Um, one for the short term, that's the biggest thing. You know, we need to store two lifts. We need to store a bunch of wheels and tires and parts, engines, transmissions. Like there's a decent bit of stuff we need to store that we're not gonna need access to right away. But two, in the long term, um, it'll be nice to have some dry storage for stuff like parts that we're not, we don't need right away, big bulky stuff and like tires. So for example, this is two events worth of tires. I've still got more to dismount in the trailer and after this weekend I'll have more. So the dump is a bit of a hike. So I don't wanna take just, you know, this many and then the next week take them and I have to take them every week. It's nice to be able to just kind of get a month's worth, like a big truck bed full together and take them all to the dump at the same time. So it'll be nice to have the container for something like that. I can just throw those tires in there or extra wheels or things like that. And then when you take them to the dump, boom, load them into the truck and go. Um, just the idea is to keep the shop as uncluttered as possible and keep what's in the shop as what needs to be in the shop, what we need access to all the time. So we don't have, you know, two transmissions, three transmissions, three engines and a diff sitting in the shop that we don't need right away. And we can keep the shop kind of all business as in the sense of all the stuff we need right then and there, consumables, things like that, have everything nice and organized. That is the, oh, that is the end game here. So again, sacrifice for now, happy, happier, better, whatever in the future. So point is, container is on its way to get here today. That's why I have my trailers moved. So we are probably gonna cut, have to cut down at least a couple of these branches, uh, but I don't wanna cut them down until the dude gets here and confirms that he'll put the container back there. I'd hate to cut branches off this nice magnolia tree and then them be like, no, I'm sorry, can't put it back there. It's against policy. So uh, we have this pole saw that I borrowed from my neighbor. I really need to get a pole saw, but luckily my neighbors are awesome. He had it, he dropped it off. So um, I'm gonna wait till they get here confirm they'll put it back there and then we'll uh, cut those branches down and hopefully we can shove it all the way back in the corner. So I'm um, just waiting on his ETA, but he should be here today and uh, we'll have a container. We can start moving stuff. And I'm curious to see it in person and get an idea of like, is that gonna be enough room for all the stuff we need to store while we work out of the garage? And we'll to find out. We'll see when it gets here. like that. All right, well, it's here. That was a bit of an adventure. I'm surprised that guy was able to uh, whip that trailer in here. When he pulled up, I mean, they tell you when you order the container, that's a 40 foot trailer. And I'm like, I highly doubt anyone's got a 20 foot, you know, it only takes 20 foot containers. But when you see it in person, you know, cause my old trailer was a 36, but that's 28 foot floor space. That was 40 foot floor space. It would be equivalent of like a 48 foot trailer. That's a big, big old trailer. So what he ended up doing, he pulled in normal like I do, which I back in like this, 
Um, but then it's you've got to basically go like 180. So he backed out, backed into the road, whipped it around, boom, boom, and then backed down in from that direction, which I don't think he would have got it in here from the other direction. But, I mean, dude, he got it. And I was all worried he was going to be like, oh, there has to be no obstructions. And I, that's why I borrowed the pole saw to cut these branches. But I didn't want to cut them unless I had to. And he's like, dude, that container isn't going to care about those branches. So it worked out. I'll try to push that one up and let it grow over it. Like I said, the plan is to kind of let the forest take this thing over and hide it a little bit. Shoved it as far back as we could. It could still go back a bit to my property line, but I don't know how that works. I think there's setbacks for that. Yeah, anyway, containers here. It is pretty ugly, ugly uh, yellow. I wish we could have got the front over a little bit more, but it coming off a trailer, it's not gonna work. Um, but it's, it's supposed to be structurally sound. If it has any leaks, they warranty that. Uh, it's definitely about as big as I expected. Uh, I think we should be able to fit everything in here. I don't see why not. With how much height we have, we'll just have to play Tetris and stack stuff really well. Now, the bad news is I just got this information. A uh, new shop is not going to go up until January. It's October. So I just found that out today. I got that call today. But the prices of containers and the difficulty of getting them is just going up and up and up. So I figure we might as well throw this thing here while we can. Not have to source it at the last minute. technically need it right this second it'll actually make our lives a lot easier having to extend our stay and the, the half shop because the big problem I'm running into right now is I'm just running out of places to put stuff you know there's parts I need for cars that I need to order because as most of you know things are very difficult to get right now everything's back order takes a long time I don't have anywhere to put it you know I've got a pile of boxes of parts for the turbo truck and some other stuff in my front room or in my garage because I don't have anywhere to put it out here and I'm forced to store things out here out in the open that I would prefer not to have so easily accessible just because I do not have anywhere else to put them. My loft is completely full as you can see you know we've just got there's a decent bit of stuff and we need to get more stuff and we do need to go through some stuff and get rid of it uh, but we're just running out of space. So point is Having the container here now will definitely make our lives much easier in the short term because we'll have a place to put those excess things, which I want to start doing. I want to start throwing stuff in here. Um, we got to be careful. It's like when you get a new toolbox. You know, you start, you have a small toolbox, it's packed, you finally get a bigger toolbox, and then you're like, man, this thing seems empty. And your instinct is to try to fill it up. You know, you want to use the space, but you shouldn't do that because long term you're going to accumulate more and more tools and you will eventually fill it up correctly not with a bunch of stuff you don't need in there um so this is kind of the same concept i don't want to go filling this thing up with stuff but i would like to get some stuff out of the way get it in here um and not have to worry about it All right, got this area pretty much cleared out. This is all scrap. All of that has to go to scrap. This is a transfer the truck. Pallets, uh, I was gonna toss them in there on the floor to stack stuff on, but I forgot to do that first. Got a few more things to clean up out here, but made a big impression already. Knocking down the uh, crap, crap pile. Um, and like I said, now we have a place to store non-crap. Um, so right now I've got a little walkway in here. Obviously, it's not textured out very well, but that's just because, again, this is temporary stuff that we may need to get to. 
these all gotta go. Um, these I need to sell, that's stuff for the vet. So uh, yeah, it is filling up quick though. I knew that was gonna happen, but when we do pack this up full of stuff from the shop, I mean, we're gonna pack it in here with no walkway. You know, we're gonna just fill this thing to the brim, store the stuff until we need it, and then pull it all out. That's kind of my game plan. So I do wanna get some shelves. I, after kind of putting stuff in here, some shelves would be nice. Just, you know, maybe a couple shelves on one wall just to store the loose stuff, but stuff like totes and stuff, we'll be able to just stack those all the way to the ceiling. So I think we'll be able to fit everything in here. Again, it's gonna be a bit of a game of Tetris for sure, but nice addition to the property. Nice to finally have some more uh, closed storage. Yeah, this door is not great. Oh, that's, these are way better at least, though, aren't you? All right, well, it's gonna bug me to leave this thing yellow for any longer. So we're gonna go get some paint. I wanna go get a few different colors to try and see which one matches best and then just spray the whole thing that color. Uh, probably won't be able to get this side over here because there's, oh no, we can probably get most of it. It's shoved back in there good though. I'd like to push it over a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with where it is. All right, well, wow. <laughs> I'm at Walmart and uh, yeah, must be a spray paint shortage. Uh, there's like, this is pretty much the color I was going to go for. Um, and there's one. There's a decent bit of black. I don't know if I want to paint it black. It'd probably blend in best though. Dang, dude, this is rough. I have to get roll paint. All right, well, since I could not get spray paint, went ahead and got roll paint. I got this color, deep spruce. Uh, I guess maybe I should have gone tropical foliage. <laughs> Is these are a little lighter than I thought they were in my head. But anyway, just trying to roughly match, that matches the paint of the truck, roughly match the foliage, blend it in. Now, the reason I wanted to do spray paint is I think it would take longer to cover the bulk, but it would be a lot faster to get the nooks and crannies because the container has a bunch of, you know, corrugated, it's in and out. So I don't know how easy this is gonna be to roll paint it, but we didn't really have any options. Just like there's a shortage of everything, there is a shortage of spray paint, apparently. They have like nothing. So yeah, let's give it a shot. I got two gallons, hopefully that's enough. We'll find out. All right, well, my neighbor made a good point. I went and bought an airless sprayer. It's gonna make life a lot easier and I'll have to paint my house soon anyway. So took the old Polestar. It's been a while since I drove it, but it's Florida, it's hot, and this thing's got AC. That's the reason why I wanted to get spray paint because I knew it would be tricky to try and paint with, with all the shapes and curves, but I didn't even think about getting the arrow sprayer. Spray and normal paint, which is what we are doing. So it'll be nice to have. I just, I struggle right now to buy big equipment -y stuff because I'm like, I gotta store it, you know, when the shop's torn down. The more stuff I get, the more stuff I gotta store. But we got a storage container, so hey. <laughs>
All right, well, container paint done. I am honestly <clears throat> super happy with how that came out. I feel like I could have gone with a little bit more yellowish green of a color to match, but it is also stuff's kind of dying. We're coming into fall, but overall, drastic difference. If you go back here, like before, if you looked over this way, you just see this big yellow thing with letters on it. Now it just kind of, it blends. It blends like I hoped it would. So I'm really happy with this overall, how far back we, we were able to get it, how far over. It's pretty much exactly kind of how and where I expected it to be. So I bought two gallons of paint. We were able to paint, obviously the side, the front, we got the whole roof and I got about half of this side because you can't really see the rest or get to it. Same with the back, you can't really see the back. Um, I tried to paint it from the roof, but the, the gun doesn't like to be sprayed upside down. So I might have to try to tackle that later. Just get the back painted so like any direction you see it from, you don't see the yellow, but I think it's okay for now. Also, if you're ever gonna paint anything with like house paint, you know, like inside, outside, whatever, buy one of those dang airless sprayers. They're like 200 bucks and life-changing. I mean, we probably, just spraying this took me like maybe an hour, if that. It went so quick, it covers so good and thick, you can get in all the cracks and crevices. That's what I was worried about was roll painting it. You know, if you're like trying to roll on this, it, it's not gonna go well. So that was definitely the move. I'm glad my neighbor Bill talked me into doing that. But again, overall, really happy with this. Came out really good, really stoked to have some outside storage. That has been a much needed, long awaited, improvement even though we're going to be waiting longer for the shop again it's going to make life here way easier for now to have a place to lock up valuable stuff that's not setting it out here all out in the open so we've still got some cleaning to do some organizing to do i want to kind of start packing long-term stuff in there soon but i need to get those tires out i need to get this scrap taken care of so we're not done by any means but for now huge improvement to have the container there so i think that is going to be a wrap i'm going to go ahead and end this video out here super stoked on all the house improvements and uh, there's definitely more to come so i hope to see you guys for that but for now that's it thanks for watching thanks for subscribing goodbye